From 1950 until 1956, the Hungarian national team, also known as the Golden Team, or the Magical Magyars, were the best team in the world. They boasted quality players such as Sandor Coxis, Zoltan Sibor, Nandor Hidaguti, and their captain and prize asset, Ferenc Puskas. Under the management of Gustav Seves, the Hungarians set the world alight, blowing teams away with their strong attacking force, and to this day are regarded as one of the greatest sides of all time. The 1954 World Cup was hosted in Switzerland, and Hungary went in as colossal favourites. They blitzed their way to the final, where they would face West Germany. Hungary went 2-0 up in the first 8 minutes thanks to goals from Ferenc Puskas and Zoltan Sibor. What happened next would shock the footballing world. This is the story of the miracle of Bern. Before we start, a quick side note. In 2010, a study came out stating that the German players could well have been involved in doping. This is a hotly debated topic that we will probably never know the true answer to, so there will be sources in the description should you wish to read up on this and draw your own conclusion. Hungary reached the 1938 World Cup final, where they faced off against Italy. Unfortunately, the Hungarians lost to the Italians by four goals to two. The players for this Hungary side would not have a chance to go and do one better, as the World Cup was put on hold for 12 years due to the outbreak of World War II. In 1949, Gustav Sebes took charge of the Hungarian national team, under the title of Deputy Minister of Sport. Under the rule of the Soviet bloc, international football was one of the few expressions of national pride that was permitted, meaning sporting events attracted large crowds, keen to experience escapism from communist oppression. Sebes based the team around a core of players from Honved Budapest and Ferenc Faros. He deployed a 4-2-4 formation, with a key tactic of the side being Nandor Hidaguti, who played as a false number 9, which dragged opposition defenders out of position and allowed attackers such as Puskas, Seabor and Coxis to capitalise. The team used an original form of total football that was based on the concept that any player on the pitch could fill any position. Hungary did not compete at the 1950 World Cup, but they produced some extremely impressive results. They thrashed several teams in friendly matches, including an 8-2 win over Poland, 5-0 wins over Bulgaria, Sweden and Czechoslovakia, a 12-0 win over Albania, and an 8-0 win against Finland. Hungary then went to Finland for the 1952 Olympics. They arrived at the tournament on the back of a two-year unbeaten run. They defeated Italy 3-0 in the first round, before truly coming to life in the next two games. They defeated Turkey 7-1 in the quarter-finals, and Sweden 6-0 in the semi-final. They took home the gold medal after goals from Puskas and Sibor sealed a 2-0 win over the Yugoslavia. Hungary sealed the second trophy the next year with the Central European International Cup, a tournament that served as the predecessor for the European Championships. Later that year, Hungary truly announced themselves to the world. England wanted to rise up to the challenge and face the Hungarians. The FA felt that England were the true masters of the game, as they had invented it, and wanted to prove this by facing the Hungarians head on. On the 25th of November 1953, Hungary faced England at Wembley, with England having never lost at home to a team outside of the British Isles. However, the English were soon brought back down to earth. Hungary tore England apart, taking the lead in the first minute in front of 105,000 fans in London. A hat-trick from Hidaguti, two goals from Puskas, and a goal from Joseph Bosic saw Hungary run out as 6-3 winners. England was shocked and wanted revenge to prove this was a blip. England went to Budapest in May 1954, keen to enact their vengeance on the Hungarians. Hungary won 7-1. Three weeks after this result, Hungary went to the World Cup in Switzerland as overwhelming favourites. They were now unbeaten for four years, and they proved why they had this tag in the group stages. Hungary opened their World Cup campaign with a 9-0 thrashing of South Korea, with a hat-trick from Sandor Coxis. They followed this up with an 8-3 win over West Germany, and Coxis added 4 to his tally. With 17 goals in their first two games, all was going to plan. Unfortunately, an ankle injury to Ferenc Puskas ruled him out for the next two games. These results sent the Hungarians to the knockout stages, where they faced Brazil, runners-up four years before. Brazil were keen to avenge themselves after missing out on the trophy, and had scored six goals in their two group games. The match, dubbed the Battle of Bern, was an intense affair, 
The match was played in pouring rain, and within the first 10 minutes, Hungary had scored twice through Hidaguti and Coxis. Jarma Santos scored a penalty for Brazil to make it 2-1 at half-time. Mihale Lanos scored a penalty in the second half to restore Hungary's two-goal advantage, but the penalty led to a pitch invasion from outraged Brazil journalists, who were eventually taken off the pitch. Brazil made the score 3-2 through Jolinho. The game descended into ugly scenes when Nilton Santos tackled Joseph Bozic, which resulted in a fight between the two that got them both sent off. The game was settled with a goal from Sandor Coxes, but in the dying moments, Brazilian forward Humberto Tozzi was sent off for lashing out at Gaiula Laurent. The fighting continued after full time, with the Brazilians attacking the Hungarians in their dressing rooms, and the scenes led to Gustav Sebes requiring four stitches in the face. No disciplinary action was taken against the Hungarians, however, and they defeated Holders Uruguay after extra time in the semi-finals, with another 4-2 scoreline. Sandor Coxes scored two in this game, and took his overall tally for the tournament to 11. Hungary prepared for a rematch against West Germany in the final. For the match in Bern, Captain Puskas returned from injury to start the final. Hungary went into the match having been unbeaten in 31 games, and had scored 25 goals in four matches at the World Cup. West Germany, meanwhile, weren't even close to underdogs. Their side was made up of semi-professionals, with second jobs. It was a matter of David versus Goliath. Returning Puskas leapt onto a deflected shot from Coxis to give Hungary the lead in the sixth minute. Two minutes later, Zeeble leapt onto a mishandled back pass by German keeper Tony Turek, and doubled the lead for Hungary. Whilst it looked like the inevitable had been set in motion, the game soon did a complete 180. German forward Max Morlock pounced on a deflection to give the Germans one back. Eight minutes later, Helmut Rahn latched onto a corner to make the scores level at 2-2. After the scores were levelled, Hungary regained control but were unable to capitalise. Tony Turek made amends for his previous error with an incredible save from a Hidaguti volley, and Hidaguti hit the post four minutes later. Hungary continued to create chances in the second half of the match. Turek made a series of saves to keep the Hungarians out, and Coxis hit the crossbar. Hungary had the chances, but they couldn't make them count, and it soon came to haunt them. In the 84th minute, Helmut Rahn caught onto the clearance from the Hungarian defence before he cut inside and drilled a shot towards the Hungarian goal. The ball flew past Hungary's keeper Groxis, and West Germany had a shock lead. Hungary briefly thought they had levelled it when Puskas put the ball into the net. However, Welsh linesman Benjamin Griffiths flagged for offside. The referee William Ling disallowed the goal after consulting with his colleague. This decision is debated to this day, as the match footage does not show Puskas's position before the pass from Coxes. Reports vary on whether Puskas was onside or not, but the truth remains a mystery. In the final minute, Zoltan Seawall powered a shot towards the goal, but it was saved by Turek. German radio commentator Herbert Zimmermann reacted to this save by shouting, Turek, you are a daredevil. Turek, you are a football god. This was Hungary's final roll of the dice. West Germany were world champions, and perhaps the greatest shock in World Cup history had taken place. As West Germany's captain Fritz Walter held the trophy aloft, Puskas gracefully approached him and shook his hand to congratulate him. West Germany were delighted at the win, and many saw it as a turning point for the nation after the Second World War. However, the result led to rather different consequences for the Hungarians. Demonstrations in Budapest followed the final, and Gajula Groxis believes that these demonstrations sowed the seeds of what happened two years later. Gustav Sebes was sacked in 1956, and later that year, the Hungarian uprising took place. The uprising began with a student protest that resulted in the deaths of multiple protesters. Violence and disorder was rife across Hungary, and Soviet forces were brought in to crush the revolution. Around 4,000 Hungarians were killed, and over 200,000 Hungarians fled the country as refugees. Amongst these refugees were members of the magical Magyars such as Ferenc Puskas, Zoltan Sibor, and Sandor Coxis. These players fled to Spain, and would never play for Hungary again. At the 1958 World Cup, only four of the magical Magyars remained, and they were knocked out at the group stage. The decline continued for the Hungarians, and they have never recovered. Since the 1954 final, West Germany won a further two World Cups and two European Championships, before winning each of these trophies one more time after German reunification in 1990. Hungary, however, have only qualified for 10 out of a possible 32 tournaments since. The story of the Magical Magyars is a tragic one, 
as the team who many consider to be the best of all time did not achieve the honour that they deserved. One can only wonder what might have been had the Welsh linesman not raised his flag for Puskas's potential equaliser. With Hungary not qualifying for a World Cup since 1986, it is improbable that they will ever get a chance to make amends for their near miss in 1954, and whilst their influence over football is unquestionable, the fact that they fell at the final hurdle of glory after so much success remains one of football's saddest stories.